Carlos Ramirez, owner of NBS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. We had a street glide come up from Maryland for a huge wiring rescue. So the install wasn't that bad. The problem with the install was the mistakes that they made on the choice of electronics and how the wiring was routed. So the first issue is they had a battery isolator installed. 90% of the battery isolators that we see installed are installed incorrectly, and that was the case on this bike. So what people don't realize is battery isolators, first of all, have a maximum amperage rating. So it, you, if you're going to use an isolator, first you have to add up the amount of current draw the system's going to have. In this case, this bike had a 3000.1, 800.4, 1200.4, and a 1600.1. So you're already at over 400 amps of current draw. The battery isolator that they used was 150 amps. So three of the amplifiers were in the tour pack. There was two batteries installed in the tour pack and then one battery under the seat. So for people that don't understand the way isolators work, isolators are really meant for campers or RVs. What it does is you have six batteries in the back, one battery in the front. The battery in the front is so you're able to start. So you're out camping, you're out in the market, you're out in the mountains, and you're watching TV, hanging out with your family, and you deplete all the batteries in the back. The camper will still start because the front battery is isolated from the back battery. So when you go to start it, it takes the back batteries offline and it uses the front battery to start the RV. Very simple. A lot of these shops are installing these isolators thinking that there's going to be one battery for the bike, one battery for the audio equipment, which is fine. This causes an issue though. A, isolators are rated by current. The isolator was used in this bike was a 140 amp isolator, which means it can only flow 140 amps of current through the device to go to the amplifiers. The amplifiers drew over three, 400 amps of current. So they were overheating the isolator because the isolator was overloaded. On top of that, the whole purpose of doing extra batteries on a bike is so you can have more power for the audio equipment. Well, in this, in this scenario, the lithium batteries under the seat, the isolator was isolating the lithium battery away from the audio. So, there was two AGMs in the tour pack for just the audio. There were small AGMs, which can only supply about 150 amps of current. So you have a three to 400 amp current draw on 150 amps of current, and then the powerful 30 amp hour battery that can support three, four, 500 amps of current was under the seat isolated for only the bike to use. Then on top of that, they were AGM batteries in the back mixed with lithium batteries under the seat. And then there was only a lithium charger. So now the batteries weren't being charged properly. Then the other problem with isolators is if you run down the set that's in the back while you're playing the audio, when you start the bike and the bike starts charging, you have one battery in the front that's fully charged and a battery in the back that's depleted, confuses the charging system, and it either overcharges the front battery or undercharges the rear batteries. When you do audio on bikes, you should just run the batteries in parallel. They should be the same type of battery, same size battery. That way, the charging system sees it as one large battery and charges it like that. So, we ended up taking the batteries out of the tour pack completely, removing the isolator. We were able to create more power. The system plays louder and has more bass because now the amplifiers have more current to work with. And the charging system doesn't get confused because it's charging one battery of one type and he can use his lithium charger. So, other issue with using isolators is if you're going to use an isolator. So let's say this bike had a lithium battery in the tour pack and a lithium battery under the seat, and he wanted to isolate them both. This isolator was hooked up to accessory. So whenever he turned the ignition on, the isolator connected and it connected both batteries together, which defeats the purpose of the isolator because you can't play the music unless you turn the ignition on and the isolator is hooked up to ignition. So as soon as you click the bike on, the isolator would allow both batteries to flow current. So if you wanted to isolate the rear battery from the front battery, then you would wire to a separate switch. That way, when you're playing audio, you can turn the switch off and then the audio will only draw from the rear battery. That's not the way this was wired. So as an isolator, it wasn't really isolating. And only thing it did was limit the amount of current. So the amplifiers couldn't pull current through the isolator from the front battery. So it was done completely wrong. I'm going to post a chart 
on how isolators are supposed to be wired. If you choose to use an isolator, that's fine. If you're gonna mix two different kinds of battery, you have to have two different charging points. One for the AGM batteries in the back, one for the lithium battery in the front. So everything on this build was done wrong. Um, they ran one four gauge wire to run all these amplifiers. So we ran zero gauge to the tour pack, distributed it to the 3000.1. We did two four gauge runs to the fairing, moved the rest of the amplifiers to the fairing, removed the AGM batteries, removed the isolator, upgraded the factory ground, and now the bike sounds phenomenal. Bike has a ton more bass, a uh, lot more highs because the amplifiers get in the right amount of current so they can do full power or close to full power. It's, it's simple math, folks. A lot of these things can be figured out if you read the, uh, the manual that comes with the product. We just jump in and start doing installs assuming that we know. Just take a few minutes to make sure that the parts you're selling the client all work together properly. But check it out, check out the rescue. Okay, so this bike's got a bunch of things done to it that we wouldn't normally do. So, hole on the top for the wires, you know how we feel about that. Instead of using one set of powerful tens, they use two sets. There's two tens in each bag. This is not the right amount of airspace. Plus, there is zero bracing. So, the bag flexes like hell. There's way too many speakers on this bike, so the highs are screaming and the bass can't keep up. In the tour pack is where we have the biggest mistake. So they're using a 140 watt isolator, 140 amp isolator. The issue is you have a lithium under the seat, a lithium in the tour pack. So they have a small lithium in the tour pack, big lithium under the seat. They're using a 140 amp isolator. This amplifier by itself draws more than 200 amps of current. So just this amp will overload this isolator. Never mind this one, this one, and this one. There is not enough fusing to run these amplifiers at maximum efficiency and the fuses are not blowing because the current's being limited by the isolator. So this is the bottleneck in the entire install. There is no zero gauge wire being used. So how are you running power to the distribution block that's four gauge and then you got a bunch of four gauge out. This should be zero gauge coming in to handle the three or 400 watts of total amperage being drawn. So we're gonna get to play louder, hit harder. We're gonna get the amps to stay cooler. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna remove the small lithiums he's got in the tour pack because the lithium under the seat is enough to power everything. And then we're gonna move these two amps to the fairing. That way only the three K's in the tour pack. So we're gonna fix it up. This is the before. This DSP's gotta go too. Gonna clean all that up. Okay, now that I've taken it apart, some even bigger mistakes. They're mis mixing standard AGM batteries with lithium. If you're gonna do it this way, you have to charge them both separately, which they didn't do. So you have these two AGM batteries are less power than the lithium battery. So you have to choose all AGM or all lithium. If you mix the two, you have to isolate them and charge them separately. They only gave the client one charger, so he's using one charger for everything. Very, very, very bad. These use a different charger than those. So we're gonna pull these out. All right, Kyle's done breaking her down. Now we're gonna start over. aftermarket radio shouldn't need noise filters or line level converters if you do it right guarantee you we won't need it and they left the line level converter even though they were using aftermarket radio no good no good mr george if i said to my mum i was gonna go to a snooker hall she'd probably kick me around the ears bad places you know, miss, spend, use, all those type of phrases. But the reality is, it's just ordinary blacks.
groove slightly transformed Just a bit of a break from the norm Just a little something to break John Stars, OVO Gang DJ Kansas Day Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Roger took the trip up Virginia to get a wire and rescue done on his bike. Are you completely happy the way it sounds? Extremely satisfied. Worth the trip? Better than worth the trip. I'll come back again with another bike. Perfect. Thank you, sir. <laughs>